Hello, this is Hui. Welcome to watch my video, C++ Programming on Linux. In this short video, we are going to discuss the Atomic Operation Library. Here is the explanation of Atomic Operation Library in C++Reference.com. So the Atomic Library provides components for fine grounded atomic operation allowing for lockless concurrent program. Each atomic operation is indivisible with regarding to any other atomic operation that involves the same object. Atomic object are free of date races. And here's another explanation. The atomic types are types that encapsulate a value whose access is guaranteed to not cause data races and can be used to synchronize memory access among different threads. So atomic operation library is for multi-threading program using same shared resource and not cause data races. In other words, in multi-threading program situation, Atomic operation modify shared date in one thread and it will not allow other thread to modify same object in the middle of this update. Here on the Linux, we first show a situation. We create a program called MyThreadCalculate.cpp. So this program, we have created a function called MyCalculator and which calculate the subtotal and the calculator, the program total. Program total is shared long integer. If we run this function in multi-threading, so this is a shared object or shared date resource for multi-threading. The calculation we are doing is we make a for loop from 0 to 100. So we make a 100 loop, each loop, we're just doing subtotal plus i. And we do the same program total plus i the same time. We update the subtotal. We also update the program total. The subtotal is uh, internal threading date, and the program total is shared with other thread. So in order to make a situation for multi-threading to concurrently running, we make a sleep for 10 microseconds in each loop. The usage, we're going to use my thread calculator and we pass one parameter is the number of threads. So first we got the number of threads, which we get from a command line, and we create the thread array, it's a P thread T type, and we create a thread attribute, and our attribute will be set P thread create and the joinable. So we make a very very simple, we make a first loop from zero to number of thread, we use the p thread create to create a thread, and we are thread our thread running my calculator functions, which we just showed before, and after that we make another loop to use some p thread join, join all the thread, and then we after all the thread finished, we just print our program total, and this is a typical threading program. So we save this program, we go to another terminal. We recompile our program. In order to run in test, we make two terminal. The left terminal show our function. This is our function for multi-threading. This is program total, which is the shared date of multi-threading. So we're running our, this is our executable. We're running with 10 thread. So you can see we have a 10 thread. Each thread has subtotal, which is subtotal is 4950. And the program total is supposed to be 49500. It's because each thread subtotal is 4950. So the program total is supposed to be 10 times of a subtotal, it's 49500. But instead, we got a 49352. And if we run another time, 
and we got a 49261. So this is because we have a shared date integer of program total by multi-threading and it costs by when two threading to update this number at the same time it costs our data crash. In order to resolve this problem, we make a video before we use the STD mutex to make a threading lockable object. So before in that video, in our example, STD cout is our command shared object by multi-threading. So we use the MTX lock before we write in output and after that we unlock. This is the one way we are doing. And after C11, the C introduced new type, which is called atomic type to resolve this problem. So in order to use an atomic type, we have to include header file called atomic. And the, the atomic operation modify date is single clock ticks. So that it is impossible for any other thread to access date in the middle of such update. So in order to use an integer here, we just change this as atomic type. So in this case, we use an ICT atomic, which is type still long to change this definition. And in this case, the program total is not integer anymore. It's object of atomic type. So now let's save our program. We go to another terminal. We recompile our program. And we run our program again with 10 threading. So you can see now we have each subtotal is 4950. And the program total of total threading of 10 is 49500. So now we got the correct program totals. So we just change this from the integer, long integer to STD atomic type. So since this program total is not an integer anymore, it's object. So object has a method. So atomic type for such method. So the atomic star replaces the value with a new value. This is called assign. We can use the atomic fetch add, which is our plus equal. So we try to use an atomic star to assign the date. Now we try to use some method to update our program total object. First, we can assign the initial value. To assign the initial value, we can use the program total star method. We just add the value is 10. When we initialize this program total, initial value is 0. So this method needs two parameters. First is the value we try to assign to this object. And the second is the memory orders. So atomic objects have ability to synchronize access to other no atomic object in their threading by specify different memory orders. So memory order use as an argument to function that conduct atomic operation to specify how other operation on different thread are synchronized. So we have such options, relaxed, consumer, acquire, release, acquire, release, sequential, consistent. The preview we used, the operator equal, operator plus plus, it's used the sequential consistent memory order. So here in the function, we using this plus equal, which using the sequential consistent memory orders. In your program, you can base on the definition of each kind of memory order to decide what memory order you are going to use. So here, so we can use the fetch add 
this fetch head need two parameter. First one is the number, which is i. We're going to fetch head. Second is the memory order. We just use one of the easy one, which is the relax as a memory order. So now we made a modification. We get the initial value is 10, and we're using the fetch add instead of using the operator plus and operator equal overload. So this should be same as this one. So now let's try to save this program again. We go to other terminal to recompile the program again. So we run our program again. You can see we change this with the method, with the memory order specification, and then the result is the same. So we assign the initial value as 10. So the total value equal 10 times of this value plus the 10, which is the initial values. Hello, this is Hui. Thanks to watch my video. Hopefully this is useful. It's going to be great to have your feedback.